its head. Uh, good evening. Good evening. I hope you like my new suit. I bought it with the proceeds from Captain Tom's latest book. <laughs> <laughs> news for you. I'm Alexander Armstrong. In the news this week, in Liverpool, during Keir Starmer's riveting speech, one man who tries to leave early is quietly escorted back to his seat. <laughs> <laughs> After the IOC confirmed a host of new sports for the 2028 Olympics, organisers deny that some of the events are getting a little obscure. <laughs> And as he visits the royal millinery, King Charles has concerns that the hat they're proposing he wears for his state visit to Ireland might be a little unsuitable. <laughs> <laughs> On well, the end's team tonight is a journalist and broadcaster for GB News whose first political memory is of her family gathering round the television back in 2003, popcorn at the ready, to watch the result of the confidence vote in Ian Duncan Smith. <laughs> Well, that's how bad TV was until Pointless came along. Please welcome <laughs> Olivia Utley. <laughs> On Paul's team tonight is a comedian and actor who appeared in the film Journey's End, or as it's now known, Old Oak Common. Please welcome <laughs> Miles Chuck. We begin with the bigger news stories of the week, apart from that one, because it's just too awful. Ian and Olivia, have a look at this. Ooh, it's Sir Blair Starmer. <laughs> Rachel Reeves in an unlikely blue. Oh, and... Oh. <laughs> Keir Starmer getting a great makeover. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the Labour Party conference in Liverpool, where the most exciting moment was Keir Starmer getting glittered. The protester, no one quite knows what he was actually protesting because it was very long and complicated, yes. and he was still explaining yes. it as he was being dragged past <laughs> us. I thought it was someone from Just Stop Strictly. <laughs> She dressed up as Keir Starmer in the glitter oh God. and the red. <laughs> Starmer wouldn't be wearing red. <laughs> what was the point of the glitter, though? Was it at a level of interest? Yeah, I mean, it made Starmer look great. Everyone around me was saying, well, doesn't Some he beautiful look great? Yes. But he had to take his jacket off, which it looked slightly rehearsed. So suddenly it was, Keir gets down to work. Ooh, Shirt that... sleeves, yeah, yeah. no jacket, not formal, not... Posh. And I think it was rehearsed because he'd ironed his shirt sleeves and who ever does that <gasps> unless they're planning to take oh, their jacket Oh, you think this off. was choreographed? Yeah, I think it was choreographed. Well, no, I don't really. Where well, GB News, <laughs> they like a conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the guy who did it, The Sun, referred to him as a Tarquin. <laughs> a sequin, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Not really clear why he did it, but here is the moment it happened. Looks like he's in the cosmos. <laughs> yes, it does, actually, isn't it? How did he penetrate the ring of steel around <laughs> Keir Starmer? Oh, the security at Labour conference was unbelievable. Tory party conference, there was airport security. Yeah. None of that at Labour. I am not surprised he got in. Well, then how did Liz Truss get in? <laughs> <laughs> According to Tom Peck in The Independent, before the glitter, Keir was described as like an embarrassed tourist asking for directions, a man who looked like he'd struggled to force a five-year-old to go to bed. And then afterwards, Dad's in his best Sunday denim, Pizza Express is booked, he's got his taste card in his top pocket and the Lighthouse family's greatest hits queued up on Spotify. They're just very good with families, Pizza Express, really. They just look after you. They? They? Bring, the, bring the crayons straight out, there's always something to do. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. You can vape in the toilets. Right. <laughs> yes. And they're very good at providing alibis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. 
<laughs> with very thin bases. <laughs> <laughs> what was Keir's big idea at the conference? His big idea was mm. to become Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And How is uh, he backing that up? Housing. Yes, building loads of houses. And where's he going to build these houses? Beautiful places. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> next to people who object to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on the green belt. The brown oh, belt? Field. No, 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 more. Oh, one of the belts. Um, is it's there a black belt? Black belt. Think, think yeah. <laughs> no! Yeah. The grey belt. Well, it seems very Keir, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, Keir Starmer wants to recreate the heady atmosphere of the new towns. The sunlit uplands of Stevenage. <laughs> Milton Keynes. Crawley, Milton Keynes. Can we remember any of the other new Basildon, towns? Basildon, Bracknell. When I worked at the civil service, I was in charge of new town scheme. Do you so know for all the of first this? time in the history of this programme, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so let's have four more. Yeah. Four more. Four more. <laughs> well, thank you for that round of applause. That makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> uh, but it was new and expanded town scheme, so Hastings was one of them as mm -hmm. well. Skelmersdale. Was there? Oh, I don't Welling Garden that. City. Welling Garden yeah, City, lovely. yes. And oh, just yeah. one pointless okay. answer, and that was Newtown, so well done if you got that. <laughs> <laughs> and horrors, Ian, how yes. did Labour snub the private schools? They said they're going to increase VAT on the fees, but they're not going to take away their charitable status. Yeah, but, I mean, look at the people the public schools turn out. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone here go to private school? Yes. 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 No. Yeah. My school was so bad, we kept it private. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, how do you think Wes Streeting will shape up as health secretary? I mean, you've got a pretty good record of spotting a good'un. You look puzzled. <laughs> Here is what you once wrote about Matt Hancock. Oh, God! <laughs> One of Theresa May's wisest appointments. Matt Hancock <laughs> is the only person with the digital mouse to fight Labour effectively. A dynamic Tory health secretary with proper business experience. <laughs> I was 21. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I think Wes Streeting's rather good, so that's not good news for Wes Streeting. <laughs> <laughs> but Rachel Reeves, I mean, my goodness, yes. she's been presenting herself as a very tough cookie. Look at that severe bob. <laughs> they all have the same severe bob. Bridget Phillipson's got it too. Severe bob, it sounds like a prisoner in <laughs> Sea Wing. Yeah. <laughs> Much experience of Sea Wing, do you? Yeah. <laughs> you go to a school like mine, you know a lot of people there. <laughs> <laughs> She was definitely spoiling for a fight with the Conservatives, but uh, watch out for uh, Ed Am I Toughiness Miliband <laughs> on the edge of this row. If the party that has herded our children into porter cabins while our school roofs crumble wants a fight about who has the most aspiration for our children, then I say, bring it on. <laughs> Mind you, he G'd himself up for a bit of a scrap later. Have a look at this. I've got an idea, friends. Let's send these Tories where they belong. Let's recycle them from government to opposition and let's chuck them into the seven dustbins of history. <laughs> oh, that's the seven dustbins of history. <laughs> I've read that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that? Oh, I, I just got that joke. <laughs> It was the seven bins thing, wasn't yeah. it? I forgot that was the yeah. thing. The he seven bins. Up something yeah. that Rishi said mm. and then turned it round into something that wasn't a joke. It probably looked quite clever. <laughs> <laughs> Some serious issues were discussed at the Labour conference, though. Um, what does Angela Rayner, for example, insist is the best way to liven up a party? Mm. Ecstasy? Venom. <laughs> <laughs> Venom? Venom consists of one litre of absolute vodka, one litre of southern comfort, about ten bottles of blue wicked, and a litre of orange juice. <laughs> Ha! An aperitif. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe Shadow Science Minister Peter Carl had had a couple of jugs too many of venom the night before this speech. Our potential has been squandered by 13 years of Labour government. <laughs> <laughs> he could be a visitor from the future. <laughs> I was terrified by how well informed the people inside the Labour conference were. They all knew what a non-dom was. Yes, now that was one bit of the speech that went down incredibly badly with the newspapers, who are largely owned by non-doms. <laughs> Proprietors who don't live here and don't pay as much taxes as perhaps they should do. Anyway, they hated that idea. Do you think that's a bad idea? <laughs> <laughs> no, one of them will be buying your station. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it'll raise quite as much as they hope. 
who have the Labour Party appointed to help coordinate their plans to protect women from harassment in the workplace? Severe Bob. <laughs> no, <laughs> not Severe Bob. Boris Johnson's ex-wife. Oh, yeah, Marina right. Wheeler. Yes, yeah. in a Marina demonstration Wheeler. that the Labour Party do have a sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> They've appointed her in charge of anti-harassment and protection of women. Um, That's right. An area where she has some experience. <laughs> mm. uh, that was a carefully worded statement. It was. <laughs> yeah. All I wanted to say was, um, ha 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 ha. <laughs> yes, this is the <laughs> Labour conference where yes. Keir Starmer's speech was interrupted by a protester who threw a handful of sparkling glitter over the Labour leader. It's the only time a Starmer speech and the word sparkling have been used in the same sentence. <laughs> Labour's shadow health minister, Wes Streeting, told the conference a child born today should live to see the 22nd century. If they're really lucky, they could attend the grand opening of HS2. <laughs> 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 In other news, according to Wales Online, Welsh First Minister Mark Drakeford wants to drive the Tories out of Wales, but only at 20 miles an hour. <laughs> Paul and Miles, take yes. a look at this. Oh, this is the Tory party conference. No. <laughs> <laughs> bed bugs. Cartoon character dragged out of bed by a bed bug. Oh, oh, God. I think I used to go out with her. <laughs> <laughs> This is the bed bug story. It's an infestation. Mm. They're coming over here, yeah. these yeah. bed bugs, oh, yeah. and they're hurting British bottoms. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, From our... France. From France. France. And they're not being stopped. No. <laughs> <laughs> They've come by Euro Tunnel because it's cheaper because you just pay for the one car, not, <laughs> <laughs> not the number of inhabitants. Apparently, all of the panic is sort of unwarranted because mm. the experts keep telling us there isn't a swarm of bed bugs. They've always actually been there. Is this GB News agreeing with the experts? <laughs> 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 Buggergeddon. Buggergeddon. Is, uh, is what we are now. <laughs> That's a nightclub in Soho, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> According to The Telegraph, once in the UK, bed bugs are expected to spread along train and transport networks. Finally, some good news for anyone living north of Birmingham. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Guardian's revealed there were unconfirmed reports of bed bugs being spotted on a London to Liverpool train. And here is a confirmed sighting, in fact, of a creepy crawly in Liverpool this week. <laughs> <laughs> In case you don't know what to look out for, The Guardian provided this useful picture of a bedbug. <laughs> and in case you see one moving, here is an action shot from The Guardian also. <laughs> they look very happy, don't the bugs. They? Well, of course they are. They've got oh. a suitcase full of booze and they're on their way to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mirror had this headline. Ew, la la. <laughs> Fear of French bedbug invasion. Do bed bugs have nationalities, though? <laughs> these, oh, these definitely. They do. These they do. Yeah, it's yeah. a worrying with things like don't let the bed bugs bite. Yeah. You said it as if it was a thing that yes. didn't really happen. Yeah. And then you think um... maybe there's other things that we say all the time <gasps> that we have to start meaning. Yes. Like, I hope you are well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, how very nice to hear from you. Uh, <laughs> I'll reply to your email shortly. Sure, yeah. <laughs> See, we've got to go back and comb through all of our platitudes and check <laughs> what else, you know, could be out there. Mm. Uh, back That's to the headline. That's an interesting statement, yes. because we're going to be invaded by bedbugs, and you say we've got to comb through our platitudes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Leave no stone unturned. Yeah. yeah. I'm back to the headline. <laughs> sorry, yes. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the Daily Star yeah. went with sacre eux, <laughs> bedbugs in Pest France, and the Daily Mail opted for, mon dieu, les bedbugs may have crawled their way to Bedfordshire. <laughs> What is wrong with that headline? Bedfordshire isn't the hot spot. No, it's not a hot spot it is, uh, It's Hertfordshire. It's where they've is had the name? highest. That yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's... Wow. You do you... know stuff, don't you, Miles? I, every now and then, I wake up and take a real interest. <laughs> <laughs> You'll spot when it happens. <laughs> Happily, bedbugs uh, haven't stopped this Scottish rugby fan from having a whale of a time in France. What do you want to say to world rugby? I want to say to world rugby. I've been on the lash for five weeks, like, you know. <laughs> and, uh, it's a wee golf tournament down the Villa Mura, and that was, that was magic, right? And then I jumped over to Marseille, and I, I couldn't believe it when I got there because they were filling this full of the old baby, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, on the lash for four weeks. Went up through the Chablis, down the wine cellars, had a brilliant time, a brilliant time. So what you're saying is you're not too bothered, like, if Scotland fans... Oh, one lose or draw, I'm getting pushed. <laughs> oh, I'm getting blutum. I'm getting blutum. <laughs> but isn't he one of the players? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Social media isn't helping people stay calm. Tian from London tweeted this week, my friend is on a train from Birmingham to Leicester and she's just seen a bed bug. <laughs> Adding, the whole carriage is screaming, it's game over, lads, <laughs> with. <laughs> <laughs> Bed bug. <laughs> what happened to the Dunkirk spirit? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the infestation of bed bugs. I'm not saying the tabloids are getting hysterical about this, but apparently from next Thursday we have to go outside at eight in the evening and bang a pan for renting. <laughs> <laughs> If you think you do have bed bugs, then experts say that the only foolproof way to get rid of them is to burn <laughs> all your bedding. <laughs> a precaution which, for some reason, Prince Andrew has been taking for several years. <laughs> <laughs> According to public health scientists, the bed bugs are attracted by warmth, so good news for Suella Braverman. <laughs> And so to round two, where we deal with the abundance of fascinating science stories in the news this week, would you like to look through the microscope of news? I bet there's a really terrible graphic that goes with this. <laughs> OK, here is your first one. Yeah, go on, let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Ian and Olivia! Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You look like a really bad adamant. <laughs> Is that the goalkeepers have quicker brains yes. than anyone else? Absolutely oh, right. Really? This is news that goalkeepers' brains are wired differently to ours, uh, which explains why David Seaman had this haircut. <laughs> Scientists tested. They tested. 20 goalkeepers, 20 outfield footballers, yeah. and 20 normal people. Normal people? Normal people. <laughs> sort of people that Rishi Sunak meets all the time. Yeah. <laughs> they discovered yeah. that goalkeepers were able to process sights and sounds at a much faster rate. This is a survey of, of 60. <laughs> yeah, but 20 of them were normal. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're controlled. Yeah. Who it means nothing, Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's pointless, but then I don't want to give another ad to his show. <laughs> Who would you say yeah. thinks most like a goalkeeper here, Ian? No, that's too slow. That's not goalkeeper quick, Ian. I needed a response much quicker than that. Uh, we have to, um... <laughs> that was a survey of one. <laughs> and a normal um... person. <laughs> <laughs> I do hope not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have got our hands on the test that was created by researchers at Dublin City University yep. to find out which of you is most goalie. Is there a croquet version? <laughs> I don't know what the croquet <laughs> version of a goalkeeper would be in. Is that potato covered in breadcrumbs? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to flash up. This is genuinely the test. You're going to flash up, I'm going to flash up yeah. either one... What about the quiz? <laughs> First, I'm going to flash up... Like, three times you're going to flash up. Either one <laughs> or two white dots, yeah. along with either one, two or no beeps. And then you have to tell me how many dots were flashed up. Have you got it? It's very easy. OK. Very easy. OK, everyone ready? One or two. There's one. Two. I don't see any. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have our goalkeeper. Look at that. Very well done indeed, Paul. Absolutely right. It was one. Was it was one? one. But we heard two little noises, you see. Mm. You saw oh. one dot. Can yeah. someone describe to me, as someone who didn't see the flash, what the flash looked like? <laughs> I know it's, just, it's, it's a, a dot. white flash. It's a dot. White flash. It's, dot. Dot. it's just a simple yeah. dot. Yeah, white right, dot. This is just like being in spec savers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think one day this sort of thing will replace television? <laughs> 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 Did you see two? One? I saw one, but I was too slow to answer, so I don't think I'm a goalkeeper oh, at heart. Can I feel as if I'm I... speaking for everybody here yes. when I say, is there much more of this? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> On the subject of being wired differently, football fans uh, often have a slightly different approach to life when watching a game. Just as an example, who do we think these two Stoke City fans are getting angry with? It's about proportional representation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a look. This is a study that shows that goalkeepers have faster brains than the rest of us. The tests also found that normal people's reactions were nowhere near as fast as professional footballers, who only take an average of 150 milliseconds before replying, yes, for that money, I will go and play in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. Next slide. Uh, oh, hang on, there's something on that one. 
flying, flying, my pretty. That doesn't look like the Guardian picture at all. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, teams. Here is your next slide on the microscope. We should come up with the comments before we see the picture. Um, <laughs> I had one of them, but the wheels fell off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I'm going to say. Whatever the picture is, I'm going to say that. <laughs> come in, picture. Bring it up. Ready to go. I had one of them, but the wheels fell off. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the highlight of the show. <laughs> this is uh, a chicken that successfully conducted Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. <laughs> Does anyone know what this might no, be? No, no idea. It wasn't Beethoven, it was... I think it was uh, a coronation anthem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. It might have been Firebird. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it wasn't, was it? You don't get in the show business that easy, I tell you. <laughs> Everyone know what this might yeah, be? Yeah, it could have been Firebird. Yeah. <laughs> this is the news that an orchestra in New Zealand has performed a concert for a flock of chickens. Shall we have a look at the performance? Yes, yep. please. <laughs> Were they performing it for the chickens or near them? <laughs> uh, for any chickens, by the way, that couldn't make the live show, that will be broadcast later this weekend <laughs> on <laughs> Classic F Hen. <laughs> will it be on your show? Yeah, almost certainly. <laughs> You're on every morning, aren't you? Every morning, yeah, 9 till 12. I don't know how you do it. Or why. It's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And now a fanfare of the common man, the lark ascended. Fingal's Cave, I think we've had that a couple of times. Have you? Yeah. Yes. Dirty devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've had this one doing its Fingal licking good. These are just... This is gold. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to keep going till the question ends. <laughs> OK. <laughs> that was the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra there. Yeah. With Chuck Symphony No. 1. According to the orchestra's chief executive, Peter Biggs, the chickens loved it. Uh, although one audience member was seen laying an egg and then hurling it at the bassoonist. <laughs> this was a performance by members of the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra to an audience of chickens. It was a lovely occasion. The chickens enjoyed the orchestra and afterwards, at lunch, the orchestra enjoyed the chickens. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Your four are Alan Titchmarsh, Elon Musk, Meghan Markle and Joe Biden's dog, Commander. Commander has been sent away from the White House for biting people. Mm. I wouldn't put it past Meghan Markle or Elon Musk to bite people. Alan Titchmarsh, not so much. Um... No, he's got rabies. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do a neighbour. Oh, yes, oh. Biden told the dog, I'm going to have to put you to sleep, and the dog said, that's good, coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> the dog is the only one that doesn't want to bring back Pebble Mill at one. <laughs> <laughs> No. They have all had trouble with their neighbours, apart from Joe Biden's dog, yeah. who has been troubling the people he lives with. Oh. So here is Joe Biden's dog, Commander. Yeah. How has he been causing trouble? A bit 11 people. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. According to the BBC, he's developed a habit of biting Secret Service agents. <laughs> what did the Secret Service agents call Commander? Uh, that bastard dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how has Commander been dealt with? Well, he's had, he's had to go live somewhere else, hasn't he? No, that's, uh, that's what they'll have told him. He's gone to live on a farm, Joe. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's been removed from the White House. He's gone to live on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Times, he's been removed from the White House and sent to an undisclosed location. <laughs> Um, why has Alan Titchmarsh been getting frustrated with his neighbours, do you know? They keep biting him. <laughs> He's called for people to stop using power tools on Sundays, complaining that the natural sounds of the earth have been forgotten about. <laughs> Alan Titchmarsh <laughs> says he is bothered by mowers and strimmers and chainsaws and leaf blowers. On the plus side, he no longer has to put up with that noise the phone used to make when his agent called. <laughs> in other nature news, what did Peter Glazebrook recently show off in Malvern? <laughs> I saw this picture in the paper. It's an enormous thing. It's either a marrow or a Don't cucumber. Don't be coy, Ian. What is it? It oh. is. <laughs> it's his massive prize-winning cucumber. 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 
Now we are... <laughs> now we're getting to winter, he'll want to harden that off. Yeah. <laughs> I thought to myself when I saw it in the paper, I thought, I know where that's going to turn. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't fainted. <laughs> um, Elon Musk, how's he been annoying his neighbours? Oh, he bought Eagle. Twitter. Well, yes. He also uses his leaf blower on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when Musk changed the name of Twitter to X, uh, he put an enormous flashing X-shaped sign on the roof of their headquarters of San Francisco. Let's have a quick look and see what it's like for people living across the street. Oh, I, uh, I couldn't see anything, but then I'm, I'm not a goalkeeper. No, you're not a goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a goalkeeper. Why wouldn't you want Meghan Markle next door? Does she use a leaf blower on Sunday? Holland's <laughs> <laughs> got to. According to the Mirror, she and Harry are looking for somewhere else to live after people in the area had grown frustrated with their mere presence. <laughs> According to the Mirror, in the Sussexes' current home, Meghan and Harry share an office with a single desk, which, for all the work they have on their plates, is one desk too many. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the missing words round, and we start with... Scientists surprised to discover what has been around for ten million years. Keith Richards. <laughs> uh... Classic FM. <laughs> It's lovely classic FM. I think it's a handy reminder that all radios have an off button. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is ginger hair. Really? Scientists have found the ginger pigment in an extinct species of frog. Ginger frogs, good luck finding the princess to kiss one of those. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Next, a couple in Hailsham spot what in their fried egg? Tiny yellow reflection of themselves. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's... Ooh. Ghost. Yes. Ooh. A ghost. <laughs> God, this is like Christmas. <laughs> A couple of odds with Uncle Alexander. <laughs> Uncle. A couple of me Sussex claim to have spotted Ooh. a ghost in a fried egg. Here it is. <laughs> oh, no. Fair enough, I'd say. Oh. <laughs> And finally, dog costs own a fortune in vet bills because what? Secret financial arrangement with vet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking that Labrador to the vet every week. <laughs> <laughs> dog costs yep. own a fortune in vet bills because he's so good at acting sick. <laughs> this is the story of Jack Russell Mix Jacquini, who keeps pretending to be ill. <laughs> <laughs> Dress sense, though. <laughs> that is. So the final scores are Ian and Olivia on six, Paul and Miles oh. on seven. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, gosh. Good, but just before we go, there's time for the caption competition. Man with the glasses saying, Prince Harry sends his regards. <laughs> <laughs> Naive man falls for smell my cheese trick. Which note we say thank you to our panelists Ian Hislop and Olivia Utley, Paul Merton and Miles Jupp. And I leave you with news that in Manchester, Radio 4 listeners are impressed by a new statue that portrays Nick Robinson getting up in the morning to present the Today programme. <laughs> <laughs> That's dedication for you. <laughs> in Liverpool, as Keir Starmer takes the stage, Emily Thornbury regrets that edible she's just popped. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a touching moment in a garden in Washington as a nurse finds her missing patient at three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. For some of the country's funniest young talents, time to stand up and be counted. Who will triumph at this year's BBC New Comedy Awards? Press red to watch now on iPlayer. Coming up next, Mrs Brown's feeling a little out of the loop. And a modern classic, horror Get Out, starting now on BBC Three.